It's uh, October the 11th, 2005, and our guests today are starting from my right to left. This is Myra Krieger, Myra. this is Betty Oster, and Floyd Oster. And our student group today are Courtney West from Castle Rock, Colorado. Castle Rock. Very good. Matt Mara from, from Houston, Texas. Pat McGlynn from Boise, Idaho. Lindsay Lee from Golden, Colorado. And Christy Mark from Minden, Nevada. Very good. Welcome all. Okay. Um, in that, that Floyd and Betty and Myra have uh, told their stories over and over again. We'll, we'll sort of spare them from that this <laughs> this time. But just to say that they're all from Weld County um, and that Myra grew up around south of LaSalle. Betty was out near Wiggins, which is, tell, tell us where Wiggins is. About 50 miles from Greeley. Yeah. East. East, yeah. <laughs> okay. And Floyd, you, you were born where? Greeley. You were born in Greeley. And has lived here for most of his life, bar the time he was uh, in World War II. So we'll just begin with our questions. Who's going first? Um, I will. I'm Courtney and um, Myra, do you remember when Amelia Earhart flew the Atlantic? What do you remember about it? Well, she made several trips, and then of course this, <laughs> and it was failing. I guess they have never found any trace of her at any time. It just disappeared. Yeah, I remember that very distinctly. You don't I don't mean, remember much about it. Yeah, no. Just hearing about it. Just hearsay is all I remember. Yeah. Okay. Who was Glenn Muller? Sorry, we'll, we'll need you to say your name. Oh, I'm sorry. Matt, my name's Matt Mara, and Myra, do you know who Glenn Muller was? You know who Glenn Mueller was? Mueller? Mueller. Yes. It's Miller, actually. Miller? So, Ma yeah, the Glenn ba Miller. You remember Glenn Miller, the, the, band, the band leader? Oh. I'm, maybe I have one of his old records. <laughs> Just hearing the name. Yeah. yeah. I Did like you ever see music. it? Uh, no. No. Just the name. <laughs> okay. Do you remember when he was lost in the war? No. No, not at all. I'm Patrick, and uh, did you ever see a troop train? Did you ever see a troop train? I rode on one. <laughs> um, I was going out to Portland, Oregon to join my husband who was welding in the shipyards and the whole train was a, just the, you know, the boys going out that way. So, but that was on the train, otherwise not marching or anything. I never saw a troop train. <clears throat> I saw uh, prisoners come into the Weld County. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> my sister was a welder on the ships in Portland. Were these ships for for the war? Yes. Okay. I've seen troop trains, been on troop trains. <laughs> it was a pretty common occurrence. Yeah. Where did you go on a troop train? Where, where were you traveling? From New York. Uh, my home base was in uh, uh, California. And uh, I'd, well, I was in the medics, and I'd go uh, on the ships and go across and bring the wounded back on the troop ships. And uh, we'd finally, when they, uh, well, got Japan quietened down, and just before D Day, uh, they took us out of uh, the Pacific. I made four trips in the Pacific, and then they took us over into to uh, the Atlantic, and I made three, three trips in there, but we'd have to ride the troop train from back, uh, from New York to California to 
start over again. Okay. And what was the uh, what was the time span for all those trips that you made? Where was I? What, what was the time span? It all depends. Okay. Yeah, uh, longest I was ever on water without uh, seeing land was 28 days going from San Francisco to Australia. Wow. And the old ship would go out and break down and we'd just bobble around. <laughs> we decided when we got to Townsville, Australia, that Japan was pretty near a whip because if they wouldn't have, they had got us for sure because <laughs> we didn't have no protection at all. Just a, and the old ship was out of mothballs and first trip and it would just go a ways and then break down and bobble around. <laughs> um, I'm Kirsty and um, how are the steam trains different from trains today? <laughs> Have you guys ridden on a train lately? Yeah. Any time? Yeah, well, since were, riding. <laughs> but uh, uh, I know one thing: if you go on the trains in them days from, uh, well, New York to San Francisco in the summertime, while we had uh, our suntans on, and. Uh, it's just a bunch of colored people got off the, ship, the train and go through the tunnels and no smoke and come back and just, well, the sut from the smoke and everything would just be black. I mean, <laughs> How long would it take to get from uh, New York to San Francisco? Well, it took us six days. Uh, and it, it all depend on how fast they need to <laughs> yeah. I've never been really on a train, so I don't know. Were you ever on a train, Myra? Hmm? Were you ever on a train? A lot, a lot. A lot. How are the steam trains different? How are the trains different? Well, I haven't <laughs> recently, but when my uh, Oldest daughter, yeah, and it's had to be 60 years ago. And then during World War II, I wrote it then, but we had relatives in Wisconsin and we went back and forth an awful lot. The only thing that was so scary, I had to change trains. I think it was in Cheyenne, and here I have a pillow and I'm trying to carry my little girl and hail in a suitcase. And I had, in the dark of the night, I had to cross some tracks to another. And, oh. Yeah, I was so frightened. <laughs> we're still alive. <laughs> where, uh, where in Wisconsin were your relatives? Where? Where in Wisconsin were your relatives? Oh, uh, well, it was Baraboo, and that's the home of the Ringling Service um, Circus, and they had their barns there and all their animals during the winter there. And then while there, they uh, came back home after traveling all over the United States for years and had a big circus there. And so then I went with my um, uncle and his family. And it's real interesting. Where in the state is Baraboo? Like, uh, oh, is Baraboo? It? Uh, close in Madison or uh, Milwaukee, okay. in that area. All right. Uh, I uh, come back from overseas and uh, they give us a, a lead home. Well, another guy and I, we got a three-day pass and was in, uh, went to town, and uh, we just got off the bus, and the sergeant come along, and he says, you guys go back to camp. You've got a, a furlough home. Well, uh, we hadn't slept too good on the trains or anything to get in the airship. And I went down to the depot and bought a train ticket home. 
and uh, I had a, a layover in Chicago. Well, I got into Chicago and the train was, uh, I had six hours and uh, messing around, keep awake. And uh, finally one of the guys in the booth <laughs> hollered across and told me, asked me where I was going and I told him and he says, well, he says, I think I can help you. And uh, he come out and we went upstairs and here was uh, the booth of the city of Denver. And uh, see, that was a fast train well from Denver to uh, Chicago. And uh, he talked to the guy and we got a, a ticket for me to get on that train and it was only about 45 minutes layover. And I got on that train and uh, I knew we left the depot and uh, I went to sleep and uh, a couple sailors and some woman come in and sat down in the seat uh, across from me and uh, <clears throat> I went to sleep. Oh, well, I don't think we was out of Chicago 10 minutes. I never woke up until we was <laughs> in uh, Kansas and uh, the woman says, you sure must have been sleepy. I says, I sure was. We hadn't had sleep for two days before and uh, I arrived in LaSalle uh, and my folks never had no phone. And I got off the train and started walking home. It was ten and a half miles. And uh, some woman picked me up. And to this day, I don't know who she was. She was out there in the country <laughs> and hauled me home. And I wanted to... Uh, Stop at the house when I stopped the house. To, uh, folks, to give her some gas because uh, we uh, folks was on a farm and we could get gas. And she said no. She took off. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I went in the service there and uh, uh, I drawed maps, a map double them, and uh, put names on different places. So my folks didn't know where I was at. I kept one map and, and uh, sent the other one home. And uh, I'd write, well, I'll see John or Jake or somebody in a few days and they could look at their map and they'd tell what country I was going to. And uh, the folks never had no phone, so well, in fact, uh, we haven't had the phone too long out there, and we've lived in the same place all my life. But the telephone company would go around us, and we'd sit there. Yeah. But that was the fast train when I rode on, and uh, <laughs> the slow ones. <laughs> Well, my name's Lindsay, and I was just wondering who Lowell Thomas was. Lowell Thomas? What? Who is Lowell Thomas? Uh, a broadcaster or something. I don't know. Anyway, I read his book just recently. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> About his biography and then his son, too. I don't know what position he had, but he was outstanding. I think he was on the radio every day or something like that, a news news forecast or something like that. Broadcaster. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so he was he was a news broadcaster then on the radio. Do you I, know how long ago he did that? Um, could long, be 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah, a long time. <laughs> it's real. Way, way back. Mm -hmm. 
do you, do you Floyd or do you remember him at all? I remember the name and on the radio or the newscast. That's about it. Yeah. That's all we had was a radio. Yeah. <laughs> um, did any of you ever wear high button shoes? Did you wear high button shoes? No, my grandmother did. Really? Oh, and my did. mother. <laughs> my mother too. My name's Matt, and did you guys ever meet any celebrities or anybody in the realm of politics? What was the Did you ever meet a celebrity or anybody in politics? Not that I know of. No. no. I've seen them, but I never met them in the yeah. service. <laughs> yeah. How did you like the politicians back then, compared to now? They're just as squirmy <laughs> as they were then. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Only difference is why uh, they talk with millions of dollars and <laughs> then they uh, was down. <laughs> yeah. Patrick? And uh, did you guys ever listen to the fireside chats with FDR on the radio? I have. Firestone chats. No, is, no I have, uh, but you have. Yeah. Myra, did you ever listen to the fireside chats with Roosevelt? I don't believe they did. I have no memory of that. Mm -hmm. Was it? Did you listen to him pretty frequently? Oh, whenever I, he was on and I didn't, wasn't working, yeah. Were you, a, were you a fan of Roosevelt? Did you approve of him as a president? Not, not too much. Not too much? Because he, uh, he copied everything after Hoover. Uh, Hoover didn't have the backing to, passed the bills, and Roosevelt did, and he, he copied after him, and put, uh, he put the guys to work yeah. on the CC camps and different things. And then, um, how much coal did it take to keep the house warm during the winter? Our house was three big truckloads. Really? We'd go up into the mountains with the truck, bring the coal back. Three big trucks. Dad would fill the bin, the coal, we call it coal bin, with the coal. That would take us through the winter. Okay. And you'd do it all in one day? No. Okay. Too far up. She goes in the mountains. Yeah, we went up to the mountains. I don't know how far. But you uh -huh. could get yours otherwise. Yeah, well, uh, where I live now in the coal mines, is the closest one was a mile and a half from, and uh, but it was all uh, soft coal. You carry as much ashes out as you did coal. <laughs> in. Dad didn't like the coal. He went up to get the hard coal. Hard, hard coal. Yeah. Okay. That's why we went up there. He thought it. It just. Was well, more it burned efficient. Better. Okay. Burn better and longer. Did you heat with coal? What did? Did you heat your oh, house yeah, with that coal? That was our only heat. How much did you use? I wouldn't know that, but it, oh, I say about every month or uh, six weeks, we had to go down to Brighton where there were uh, the coal mines and get a. Either we borrowed our truck or just went with the pickup and just get small amounts. But that's what we banked the fire at night to keep the house mm -hmm. warm. Yeah, we used a lot of coal. Yeah. Just tons and tons of it. In relation to heating the house? Oh, and then the old cook stove. Yeah, the cook stove. Mm -hmm. We uh, had to go out 
when you don't know anything about this. <laughs> we had to go out in the fields and pick up the cow chips when they were dry, of course. Okay. <laughs> and put them in the shed next to the kitchen. And um, mom would feed the cook stove with that. Okay. Cook her meals and, you know, bake and everything. They're hot when they're burning. And the, yeah. the, the odor was neutralized at that point, though, right? There was no odor. Okay. How do you feel about alternative energy now, instead of using coal, like the wind power energy and all that these days? Well, you can control the heat temperature in the home, you know, just the way you want it. But when you start a fire in the stove, boy, <laughs> you're <laughs> you hot. pretty fast. Yeah, and, well, I mean, you can't, after it started, you can't make it, <laughs> hold it down, you know, to, yeah, so um, it was a comforting heat, though. I said, I miss that because of your, with the furnaces, I don't know what, it just isn't the same warmth, you know. Yeah, I like to turn up the thermostat. <laughs> That's a pleasure. <laughs> Uh, we, well, in the late 30s, as, uh, I don't know where my folks got the money, money but uh, they put in a propane furnace in the house. It's a floor furnace, and they use propane. I'm still using that furnace today. It's heating uh two more rooms, they had three rooms, and we've got five, and that furnace still heats, there's no electricity to it. We can generate its own electricity and for the thermostat, and uh, well, uh, they, they'd condemn it today for sure, as <laughs> old as it is, but uh, it's still doing the work. No repairs or nothing on it, and well, from the 30s till now, it's that's pretty reliable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm Courtney, and did any of you guys ever have any serious injuries? What serious? Well, you <laughs> broke a bone. You broke your leg. Oh, I broke my legs a couple times chop my finger off. I'm one of the lucky ones. I can prove that I ain't all here and the rest of you can. <laughs> <laughs> you can expect anything. <laughs> How did you cut your finger off? <laughs> it, I got it chopped off uh, in an emery wheel. I was grinding slag off the iron, we was built in an elevator, and uh, it's cutting the uh, flights in this elevator, and uh, it was inch by three eighths, what, eighteen inches long, and I was grinding the slag from the cutting torch off each end, and uh, just woke up, it was a big seven horse wheel, and I'd just walk up to it and flip the iron in and turn it over, and, and it grabbed the iron and then went under, and I got my finger in between the guard and the uh, iron, chopped it off. I didn't even know what was going, and I went to got the iron out and went to grind them and pretty soon I felt something hitting my foot and I looked down and big old puddle of blood on the floor and look here and the old finger was saying whoop 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 <laughs> <laughs> went to the doctor what was the bad part about it and he gave me a shot of tetanus sent me to Denver to get a finger operated on and Walked in the hospital in Denver, and they give me another shot of tetanus, and that about killed me. 
<laughs> oh, I should not have two tennis Swelled up around the waist, oh, three inches, and uh, I, uh, out of my head, I asked my wife, well, I was supposed to go to the doctor in Keensburg. We lived about three blocks, and I would got in the car and drove up to that doctor's office and come back home, and then I went to asking her when I was supposed to go, and they found out that I was out of my head. I didn't know, and uh, she called the doctor. The doctor come down, and I, she put me in bed, and I was in the bedroom, and the doctor walked in the door, and he says, this has got to go one way or the other, and that's the last. <laughs> He put a needle in my arm, and it was just like fire going down my leg. I could it just like a blaze around and down the arm, and I guess I want to get better then. <laughs> but it was bad. Finger never did bother me to uh, that is hurt or anything. <laughs> Did you guys ever have any injuries, serious injuries? No. She had a broken nose. Well, I have a broken nose from a car wreck, but <laughs> that goes with it. Did you ever have any serious injuries? Not me. <laughs> My husband had about the same experience. First, um, it was a corn uh, picker, and it was a damp morning, and. Uh, the leaves were getting clogged, and he reached back and got the glove in there, and it held him. And then he was trying to <laughs> step on the clutch, you know. And then he had to roll it out backwards, and he couldn't get a hold of the gears, and it was quite a. And then when he did, he took the glove off, and then one finger wasn't there. So he quick jammed it back on. And then uh, he walked over to the uh, farmer's house. And that poor guy nearly passed out and then rushed him to the hospital. And then they uh, put a pin in his little finger. It just stripped all the flesh off of it. And But they took it out too soon and it curled like that and it was just nothing but a nuisance. It, 